debate on clauses five to eight, and the question is that part two stand part. I call Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Chairman. As we move into part two, which consists of amendments to the Housing Corporation Act 1974. I want to um, direct my comments in this, uh, this part of the debate, sir, to um, section 50, uh, the new section 50D, which is inserted um, uh, into the Housing Corporation Act by um, part two, it's part 5A of this bill. And um, 50D sets out a number of um, social housing reform objectives. And we've been very critical of the fact that this legislation uh, gives to uh, the ministers, in this case Bill English and Paula Bennett, these sweeping unfettered powers to do whatever deal they like with whoever uh, on, on whatever basis they can. So, and, and we have reason, sir, to be worried about this because it's very clear that this government is hell-bent on privatising and carving up this uh, asset that is worth $20 billion by the latest valuation. It's a $20 billion asset sheet. And it's very clear from the way that the National Party has conducted itself over the last two years on this issue that they are hell-bent on privatising this by hook or by crook. And this bill gives them unfettered powers to do that. And, and the way that they have changed their story every few months about why they're doing this, how they're going to do it, and who they're going to sell these houses to, gives us real reason to be concerned that the ministers, empowered by this bill, will do who knows what kind of deal in order to try to salvage some scrap of, of, uh, of reputation and keep their policy alive. And we've been highly critical of that because um, uh, it, well, for two things. One, uh, who knows what it means for the kind of value that the New Zealand taxpayer and New Zealand citizens will get as a result of this, given this government's horrendous track record negotiating deals with the likes of uh, Sky City and Rio Tinto Zinc and Warner Brothers, who knows what they will do to try to meet their political objectives. They've got a track record of sacrificing the interests of the, of the taxpayer. Um, but all we've got here are some objectives that I want to talk about, these so-called social housing reform objectives. And um, what the bill says in... Um, in uh, 50D subsection 2 is that these social housing reform objectives are relevant to decisions by the Minister to enter into transfer contracts but may also be relevant to other decisions by the Minister under or in relation to this part. Well, that's not very reassuring because the Minister is not required to be that the, the decisions should be tested against these values. They're just there. Um, they're not even a, a guideline. They're not even a, a recommendation. But let's let's look at these objectives. So, um, the the reform objectives are any one or more of the following: people who need housing support can access it and receive social services that meet their needs. Well, that's interesting. Because if you look at this government's record in state and social housing over the last seven years, that has, that has hardly been uh, a priority for them. We've seen a blowout in the waiting list, more than 4,000 families now waiting to get uh, into a state house, massive unmet social need uh, that has been well reported, and a rising tide of homelessness, people living in uh, overcrowded and substandard uh, conditions. Um, the second objective is social housing is of the right size and configuration and in the right areas for households that need it. And this was the first spin line that we heard from the government uh, uh, about the need for social housing and, and basically saying housing New Zealand stock is in the wrong place and it's the wrong size. They don't know. They have never, ever provided the data publicly to substantiate that spin. They simply cannot tell us how many houses are in the right place or the wrong place or the right size or the wrong size, but they've used it as a justification for this privatisation programme, Mr Chairman. 
in spite of the fact that Nick Smith or Bill English or Paula Bennett, Mr Chairman, have never, ever explained to this House or the New Zealand public how, Mr Chairman, they have um, never explained, Mr Chairman... Are you Chairman, calling? I am, Mr Chairman. Uh, Phil Twyford. They have never explained how selling these houses to Ryman or Somerset or some PPP company from the UK or, or anybody else, some merchant banker or property speculator, will, will magically ensure that these houses then are in the right place and are the right size. And that is the logical fallacy uh, uh, behind that particular spin line that somehow makes it into here as a so-called social housing reform uh, objective. The third objective here is that social housing tenants are, and I want to quote, helped to independence as appropriate. Paula Bennett, the social housing minister, day after day gets up in the house and makes out that she's rescuing social housing tenants from the terrible dependency of having a state house. Well, Mr Chairman, I've got news for the Minister. Actually, um, there are many times more uh, poor quality, cold, damp, mouldy, risky, unhealthy houses in the private rental sector than there are in the state housing sector. And any electorate MP worth their salt in this House will tell you that they are besieged by people who are desperate to get on the waiting list, who, by the reckoning of any New Zealander, would be poor and vulnerable and at risk, and they can't get anywhere near the State House waiting list under this national government because National is overseeing a reduction in the number of State Houses. And because of Nick Smith's and the National Government's housing crisis, there are so many people who are desperately in need, with families living in garages and cars and campgrounds, but they can't get a sniff of being on the waiting list for state housing because of the, the scale of the crisis under the national government and um, their running down of housing in New Zealand. But Paula Bennett wants to rescue them by kicking them out of their state houses. And we've seen this absurd policy from the national government. They have um, done tenancy reviews of more than 3,500 state house tenants who have been put through the ringer because they have committed the sin of earning enough to pay a market rent. And uh, what we found is that 300 of them out of the 3,000, less than 10% of those people have been found to be ineligible for a state house and, uh, and National wants to basically kick them out instead of making them pay a market rent and recycling that money back into the building of new state houses because they don't want to do that. They don't want to build state houses because Nick, we can't live in your, in your ghost houses. We can't live in the houses that you failed to build. We, Dr Smith, we cannot... The Minister and the Chair needs to know that New Zealanders cannot live in his ghost houses. They can't live in the houses that he's failing every day to build, and they can't live in the houses that this government is privatising and selling off. People need more houses, Mr Chairman. And I cannot understand why this government is hell-bent on doing everything but the obvious thing, and that's build more state houses. And this whole bill that we're debating here today is all about giving these ministers unfettered powers to sell off the houses that people desperately need. And they're gonna go to any number of, of, uh, of parties who, uh, who Bill English is trying to convince can make a healthy profit at the expense of the taxpayer to take these houses on. The fourth so-called so social housing reform principle is more diverse ownership in the, or provision of social housing. And that's, that's Nick Smith's big thing. He fondly imagines that the likes of the Nelson, uh, housing, Nelson Tasman Housing Trust are going to be about the future um, custodians of state housing. But nothing could be further from the truth. Take those scales off your eyes, Dr Smith, and open, your, open yourself to the truth. This is a privatisation programme because Bill English doesn't think the state has any business in the 21st century owning state houses. He wants PPP companies, he wants merchant bankers, he wants the likes of Ryman and Somerset to make a dollar off the backs of the New Zealand taxpayer and state house tenants. It's not about growing the community housing sector. And the community housing organisations that you cited, Dr Smith, they feel cynically used and abused by this government. 
because you and your colleagues, Dr. Smith, have used those community organisations as some kind of front for your privatisation programme. And they see what this government's doing. They see you running off to sell these houses and billions of dollars of land to overseas companies and, and merchant banks. I'm going to call uh, Marimar.